talk about fractional word problems. We've already done a little bit of this. Um, Saxon always is an advocate of doing uh, diagrams, which is helpful if you're more of a visual person, but this doesn't necessarily mean you're a visual person if you like it this way or don't like it this way. So if I say three-fifths of the fish were bluegill. Okay. If there are 45 bluegill, how many total fish? Okay. So three fifths is 45, right? So you could draw a little diagram, three fifths, you could do it like this and you can break it up into five sections. And then three of them, like this, this is three fifths, right? That's 45. Okay, so if three sections are 45, that means each section is 15. You could do it this way if you wanted to. And then five times 15, that's 75. That's one way to do it, okay? But I do it a different way. So I just start translating. I don't like English. So I'm going to get it out of English as soon as I can. Three-fifths is three-fifths. How do you say of in math? Yeah. Multiplication. Multiplication. How do you say fish? Well, we don't know, right? So I'm going to say F. How do you say were? Uh, what verb is that, a past tense of? Yes. Equal? Yeah, it's the past tense of is, right? Um, so I say is. Now you say bluegill. Well, we don't know bluegill yet in this sentence, right? So see how I just said, everybody look up here, three-fifths of the fish were bluegill. Does that make sense? Okay, now the next sentence says, if 45 were bluegill. So now guess what I can do? I can cross that out and put a 45 there instead. Everybody okay with that? All right, so now I've got a fraction times an unknown equals this answer, all right? How do I figure out the missing factor? Yes, Adeline. You divide. You divide, okay. So this is, uh, I'm gonna do this algebraically. And this is what I, how I want you guys to start doing these problems. So here's my equation. I'm going to rewrite it with a nice, clean 45 there. Okay, so this is 3 fourths times F equals 45. You, there are three principles of solving equations. If you look over here, your main goal is to get the variable by itself. Because if the variable is by itself, the other side is what the variable is. So if I want to solve for x, I want to say x equals something. Okay, the only way you can get x equals something is if that x is by itself. So you're trying to get rid of everything except the variable. To get rid of stuff, you do the opposite operation. Did we talk about that? So if something's being multiplied by the variable, to get rid of it, you do the opposite, you divide. If something is being added to the variable, you do the opposite, you subtract. Okay, and then of course the golden rule, you can't just go around dividing things. There's consequences. In an equation though, you can do whatever you want to one side of the equation as long as you do the same thing to the other side. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna divide by three fifths because that will cancel that. But whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. Did I tell you about my uh, OCD-ness? And uh, whenever I walk by and I accidentally hit my shoulder, I have to touch my other shoulder. Did I tell you that yet? No. Okay, well that's, I think that's what makes me good at math because I'm a freak of nature. Okay, so like when if I don't do this very much anymore, but like if I accidentally bump my right shoulder, I feel uneven. So like if I do this or something, oh, 
and I'll just touch my right shoulder, and now everything's balanced. <laughs> That's weird, right? Anyone else do that? Do you? My dad. So says, no? My dad. Yeah. Oh, you do. Okay. My dad says if you hit our other toe, he'll be willing to hit our the opposite toe so we feel even. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't quite do that. If I get seriously hurt, like my, like if I stub my left toe, I'm not going to stub my right toe. But you know what I find myself doing is like kind of crunching my tip, my right toe together just to kind of even out the pressure. So it's weird. I know. Sometimes I do it subconsciously. So I don't even know I do it anymore. But my life is balanced and I like it balanced. Yes. I throw a punch at whenever I get myself on. Yeah, you do? Does that hurt your knuckles? No. What if you hit yourself on like a knife? Wait, that would be bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so guys, uh, algebra is the same way. So if you do something to the left side, you better make sure you do it to the right side. Because that equation, this is very powerful. That means you have to keep everything over here the same as over here. So whatever you do to this side, you have to do to that side. All right, well, how do you divide by fractions? You copy dot flop. So now F equals copy. Remember, you can only multiply fractions with fractions. So if you don't have a fraction, you have to make one. And you make a fraction out of a whole number by throwing it over one, right? Dot flop. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, let's cross reduce because this is a multiplication problem of fractions, so that's nice. So F equals 75. Okay, um, now that was a long explanation for that, but basically what we did is we translated that English into math and we solved it. You guys think you can do those types of problems? You don't have to do it this way for now. You can try to figure it out, draw a diagram or whatever, but algebra makes it so much easier. Like I, I'm, I forgot that we were even talking about fish, right? But this, this makes it easy. You just translate and then you follow these steps, the, these principles of solving an equation. Now we'll get to the nitty gritty steps a little bit later in algebra one and maybe a little bit in pre-algebra. But for now, um, your main goal is to get the variable by itself. Do whatever it takes. All right, you ready for another problem? Okay, I don't know why they use the same fraction, but uh, let's try this. Let's try this. Okay, example two says three-fifths of the lights were on. 30 lights were off. Okay. How many were on? Do you know? 90. 90. Oh, let's see here. I don't think that's right. Oh. What do you think, Hunter? 45. Okay, what do you think? I was going to say 45. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do my do what I did before. Um, and translate. I'm going to say three-fifths of the lights were on. Okay, so I'm, what should I say for on? Oh, and. Oh, is a little weird, right? Should I just say and? Okay, all right, and then I say 30 lights were off. So 30 were off. How do you say off? Oh, well. Oh. You could use another variable. Okay. So we'll just say F. Oh. Okay. How many were on? All right. Well, what does N equal? Well, this doesn't really help me because there's like three different variables on the board, right? So if three fifths lights were on, then what can I say about the lights that were off? Hunter? Two fifths. Two fifths. Okay. So instead of F, I'm going to say two-fifths of the lights. 
Okay, so two fifths of the lights were off. Okay, now this I had to switch fractions because we're not talking about lights that were on anymore. We're talking about lights that were off. Okay, so I can make an equation out of this. 30 lights were off. So 30 is, were two fifths of the lights. So if three, five, three fifths of the lights were on, that means two fifths were off. Everyone see how we got two fifths? Yeah. Okay, so if like seven sixteenths students failed, then what, then how, what fraction passed? Hunter? Nine sixteenths. It's whatever's left. Okay? So I can solve this equation. How do you solve for L? How do you solve for L? What do you do? Divide. Divide. So we're going to get L by itself, right? So divide two fifths. Divide two fifths. So L equals 30 dot flop. Did I do that right? Yeah. Um, you didn't use your red pen when you put those two numbers. I know I didn't because there was already red on there. So it was a little weird. So L equals 75, but I thought you said 45. Well, what does L represent again? All, All, the, lights. Lights. All the lights. So if there was a total of 75 lights and 30 were off, then how many were on? 45. 45. Okay. All right, so you, you had to finagle this one a little bit, but do you guys think you can figure that out? Yeah? Okay, let's move on to 72. Evie, do you really do that when you hit your shoulder and you hit the other one? That's why I like you. Because we think alike. That's good. All right, lesson 72. I can't read my own handwriting. 12. Books. What's lesson 72 about? What's that? What's lesson 72 oh, it's about? It's about rates and uh, let's let's just wing it here. Let's say 12 books weigh. Uh, 20 pounds, 12 books weigh 20 pounds. How much, how, how much does 30 books weigh? How much do 30 books weigh? I don't, how do you figure that out? So what I did in my head, I think, um, I divided 12 by 20 to figure out how, um, much does one book weigh? Okay. And then I did that how much one book weighs times 30. Okay, that's right. Did you get an answer? No. That's okay. right. I, I looked at that and that's what I That would have been fast. Yes. Okay. So let's try that. So we're going to do, you know, the weight per unit, right? So to do that, it's 12 divided by 20. So let's see here. That goes in 0. 0.6 times. So it's 0. 0.6 pounds a piece and then times 30 30 times 0. 0.6 is 18 pounds okay that works is there another way to do this oh that wait it doesn't work if 12 books weigh 20 pounds how does 30 books weigh less oh uh, you're right so what i do wrong i don't know my brain hurts you did the um 
Decimal we want to split? The decimal? Decimal? Okay. Yeah. So I was just doing what Adeline told me to do. So if, if it's wrong, it's her fault. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so what did we do wrong? Hunter? Uh, I don't know what you did wrong, but I have an answer. Okay. Well, let's not go there yet. So if if this is this this is confusing because um, sometimes we don't know which what to divide and which way to divide. So we kind of we I think all of us knew that okay there's some kind of division that needs to happen here, right? So if 12 books weigh 20 pounds, then to figure out what one book weighs, it's not 12 divided by 20. It's 20 divided by 12, right? So you could do it that way. So, all right, so 20 divided by 12, let's see here. Uh, that goes in one time. And then let's see, seven times. I feel like it's gonna be a very big number. Or not seven times, but six times. Okay, so it's like, uh, it's like 1.6 repeating or one and two thirds pounds a piece. Okay. And then you take that times 30. So 30 times one and two thirds could be times five thirds. So that's going to be 50 pounds. That makes way more sense. Okay. I think there's an easier way. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to build a proportion. Okay. So if 12 books weigh 20 pounds, then how many do 30 books weigh? So how do you figure that out? Adeline? I just did fish method. Fish method, 600 divided by 12. Guess what that is? 50 pounds. All right, doesn't that seem much easier? Yeah. So then you don't have to worry about, do I divide, do I multiply? And if I do divide, which number divided by which, you don't have to worry about that. You can also set up a little ratio box like this, right? Remember that? So if the ratio is 12 to 20, so these are books, these are pounds, like pounds to weight, 12 to 20. Then let's see, 30, that goes there. So here's my fish method there. So see how much easier that is? So you can do it that way. Yes. I do a different way. What do you? What way do you do it? I do twelve plus twelve. Figure out that's twenty-four, and then figure out that half of twelve is thirty. Add those together. Or no, half of twelve is six. Add those together. Figure out it's thirty, and then take the pounds and do the exact same thing. Okay. So, do you still want to do it that way, or do you want to do it this way? That way seems a lot easier. <laughs> Good. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, and if I, if you were taking a test, you know what I would do? Not that way, not this way. I would do it both ways. Because if you get the same answer, doing it co two completely different ways, that's a good sign that you're probably right. Okay? Unless you're really, really lucky. Okay. Um, let's try another one. And then uh, let's just try a couple more. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll be done for the day, okay? Let's do, let's do this. Exa we're gonna skip example one, we'll go to example two here. So, um, let's, let's say Grace is a Christmas elf and she can tie 25 bows in three minutes, which is pretty slow for an elf. Oh. So, but she's new. She's learning the trade. Her parents uh, didn't raise her right. <laughs> so, she's uh, she's inexperienced in bow tying. Okay. So, she uh, ties twenty five bows in three minutes. So, I want to know. How many she can tie in an hour? Okay, so you can try it different, a bunch of different ways. You try to figure out like per minute how many she does per minute, or this doesn't come out very nice. 
Or you can try the fish method. What do you want to do? What do you got? This one I got too. 500 bows. That's not bad. Good job, Grace. Okay, what'd you get, Hunter? 500. Okay, how'd you do it? Uh, I just know that, like, yeah. Like 10 times 3 is 30. So I could double that. So, so 20. Times 20 is 60. So okay. multiply 25 times. 20. So here's what you did. Maybe you didn't visualize what I'm going to write down here, but this well, is I what. technically kind of did the fish method. Yeah, because it's not, you're not the fish, but the more the equivalent fraction method. Because you found that, so 25 bows in three minutes. Now I want to know how much in 60 minutes, right? So first step, you have to change that out one hour to 60 minutes, okay? And so what Grady did was, hey, there's 20 of these in 60, so times 20. So 25 times 20 is 500. So that works. Fish method um, gets your number way too big. Right, but not too big. I guess it's fine, right? What's 25 times? Well, 20 times 60. 20 times 60 is 1200 uh, plus half of that is 30. So 12 or 300. So 1500 divided by three is 500 book bows. So that works. You can still do fish method, but this works nice because three goes into 60 20 times. So times 20 times 20. Equivalent fraction method. Yes. I did that, just I didn't visualize that. I, I figured out how many times three went into 60. Yep. And then whatever I do to the three, I do to the three. Yep, time. so that's what Grady did too. So time, there's there's 20 of these three minutes and 60. So that means there's going to be 20 of those 75 bows, or 25 bows, right? So that works. Good. Okay, let's do one more. You ready? And then we're done. For the day, six is to 15 what? as nine is to what? Oh. Uh. Six is to 15 as nine is to what? You worded that weird. Yeah. This is a little bit harder to do in your head if you did it Hunter's way or Grady's way. It's a little harder because, unfortunately, six doesn't go in there. So you either have to do the fish method or you can do it some other ways. There's a couple different ways I would suggest. Anybody have an answer? Not pretty, is it? What'd you get? 22.5. Okay. Anyone else get some? What'd you get? It's the same. 22.5? Okay. Don't you hate it when it's not a nice? It's a mean number. Brown number. It's a decimal, but let's let's set it up. Guys, this is just 6 is to 15 as 9 is to what? That's it, okay? Now, the way we did it before it was it was nice because 3 went into 60 20 times, or so whatever you do the bottom, do the top. 6 doesn't go into 9. That's, an, that's annoying. So I would use the fish method. What's the fish method mean? What's the fish method mean? Somebody else besides Adam. <laughs> Somebody else besides Grace or Hunter? Besides Grady? Someone else besides Grady, Adeline? 
grace from under. Someone else besides Marin. I'm just kidding. Yeah, what do you, what would you do? Yep, and then divide by six. Good. Okay, so let's see. Fifteen times nine is ninety. Uh, yeah, ninety plus forty-five, which is one hundred thirty-five divided by six. Okay, so one thirty-five divided by six goes in two times with one left over. Two times, um, and then with three left over is 0.5. So twenty-two point five. So not pretty, but. You're not talking about bows. It's not 22 and a half bows or whatever. It's just numbers. You can only tie half a bow. Yes. It's the exact same way that I did that. The fish method? Good job. All right. I did it. That's the way I did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. Did it. Okay. You guys good? Good? Black man. Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black man.